So you've just bought a 500 euro CPU and now it's going to 100 degrees out of the box and it draws more power than your fridge. Yes. Today we're fixing it. It's actually fairly easy to get more performance while reducing your temperature and actually getting a quieter system. Now look, there is only one way to do this right, or well, there are actually two ways, but there are many ways to do this wrong. And now I have seen some very, very bad videos on YouTube. So this is gonna be the only right video to do this undervolting. So let's go in the BIOS, hit your delete key until you enter in the BIOS and let's see you there, let's go. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now this motherboard is a Z790 Gigabyte Aero G. So it has this very good looking BIOS, but it will be the same for every BIOS. If you have an ASUS board, doesn't matter. Now you have to go in the BIOS, go into the advanced mode, and then go into the tweaker section. If you have ASUS, it's gonna be AI tweaker. Uh, if you have ASRock, it's gonna be like overclocking or like OC tuner. Here it's just tweaker. So first off, we go in there. Now for this tutorial, we will have two kind of settings, okay? Now the first one is what I run in my system and what I recommend to you guys. The second one is if you feel special and jokes aside, have different needs, okay? So first of all, modern biases have something called automatic tuning. In Gigabyte case, it's called perf drive. It's this thing on top here, yes. And then if you have like an ASUS board, it's gonna be like, ASUS uh, tuning and basically what it does if you look uh, down here is it tunes your system based on what CPU and what cooler you have okay so in this case we have a 240 millimeter setting at 361 360 360 now in this system I am running a 280 millimeters all-in-one water cooler so we are choosing the spec enhance which is the lower temperature option of the high performance ones, if it makes sense, okay? In your BIOS, if you have good cooling, like a 360mm all-in-one, just choose the maximum, okay? Unlock it all the way. So in this case, it would be optimization, okay? So let's pretend you have a 360mm all-in-one cooler. We go on optimization. If you want lower temperature, you wanna pick spec enhance, and then there is eCore disabled, but we will talk about that one a bit later. Now, you choose this one, okay? Then you enable your XMP to get your RAM running at full speed. You just have to go over it and select XMP. Easy, right? Then you go all the way down until you find something that is called V-Core voltage or CPU voltage or CPU V-Core, something like that, okay? You find it, then you go on top of voltage mode, you hit enter and you select adaptive. Now in certain motherboards, it will be called offset, but it's the same thing, select adaptive, okay? Then voltage frequency offset mode, legacy, but if you don't have this, you don't have to set it, it doesn't matter. Then internal CPU V-Core, which is our V-Core, we leave it at automatic and we go and change our offset. On our offset, we input minus 0.075, hit enter. This is where the magic happens. Now guys, you can close the tutorial if you want. We have actually finished. Just hit F10, hit enter and we finished. Try it, you won't believe me. It will drop 10 degrees off your CPU and a lot of power. But now let's go and do the a bit more in-depth stuff. Now, if you have the time and effort to test your system for stability, because this, this 0.075 is gonna be stable 100% because you have literally the best CPU Intel is offering and the silicon quality is extremely good. Uh, but if you feel special, jokes aside, if you have time to test it, you can go as low as minus 0.1. This will give you even lower temperature, even higher performance because you have more power headroom and it's gonna give you uh, even lower power consumption, but it's not stable on every CPU. So you might have to test it, okay? So for now, I will recommend 0.075. Now, if you are only gaming with your system, okay, then you can also disable the efficiency core. Now, how do you disable the efficiency cores? You go in advanced CPU settings, and then you will look for something called like active efficiency cores or something like that, okay? You will find it, you can just disable it, active, there you go number of CPU e-cores enabled. You can just go in there and like set zero. Now all your e-cores will be disabled. 
So this is recommended if you're just gaming, because if you do this, your CPU will be an eight core, 16 threads CPU. I do recommend it for gaming, yes, especially for competitive gaming. Now, we have done this, okay, this thing works, whatever. Now let's say you don't like to do adaptive voltage. Why you don't like it? I don't know, but some people don't like it, okay? Well, what if you wanna do the old school method with the static voltage frequency, the static voltage? I have tested out that for you on three different CPUs and I do have some recommendations. So basically this is how you do old school CPU overclocking, okay? So what you do is go and find your P cores or performance CPU clock ratio. And instead of automatic, you just input 51. Then you go and you find your efficiency CPU clock ratio and you input 40. But actually, if you have them disabled, you can leave it on auto. So if you're using this for productivity, um, actually with the humor aside, this, this kind of overclock is intended to be used in productivity scenarios uh, because it's gonna give you higher performance than stock if you do it right. But anyways, then on the cache ratio, on the max ring ratio, you wanna hit 45 right there. And if you wanna really lock it, you can also input the minimum on 45. So this is your cache ratio, okay? At this point, you're gonna go all the way down again on CPU V-Core voltage mode, but this time, put it on fixed. And you wanna input 1.25, right there. And this is how you do fixed 5.1 gigahertz on your P-Core overclock. Now, if you try this thing, you won't believe it because it's gonna drop so much power that you won't believe it. You will lose a bit of performance with those settings, but your CPU will run as cool as ever, especially without the efficiency cores. But let's say you feel like you wanna go higher and wanna get better performance. Well, the efficiency CPU cores, leave them at 40. You can go at 40 too, but I, I do recommend staying at 40. The cache, trust me, don't go higher than 45, it's not needed. But the performance cores, which are your usual cores, you can set these old, everywhere from 55 to 57 but you will have to test this but if you want to just copy my settings you can put them to 55 and on most cpus not everyone they will work at 55 with 1.325 on the v core if you want to have 57 you might have to go as high as 1.375 okay and this is about it for today guys so I do recommend the first method, but if you do productivity and want to have an even better efficiency and sustained AVX load performance, do the 51 and 1.25 volt setting. Now guys, if this was helpful, do know that I have GPU undervolting and overclocking tutorials on the channel, so you might want to take a look at them. And I also do builds like the one we're using here today, and I do reviews of mini monitors like the one I have here today from YouPerfect. So guys, if this was helpful, please drop a like and a sub and see you in the next one. Bye.